You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Balls. What is up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, hosted by me, OBB, Brian LaFleur Jr. As always, guys, I am about to bring you guys actually your bi-weekly NASCAR Diecast News, guys. I know I haven't done like one in the last few months, but I'm now back to the weekly schedule, so glad to get things back up and running, guys, and... Man, we got ourselves a lot of cool stuff to be talking about on this new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News, episode 217. Holy crap, I still can't believe we are at that level of episodes. It's just crazy. But lots of great content to be talking about on this episode, including a crap load of 164s. We got like nearly over 20 diecasts to be talking about for the 164 line. Lots of great releases, including probably one of my guys right behind me, if you guys might know. <laughs> but we also got a, another cool exclusive 124 to be talking about as well. For any uh, Kurt Busch Ganassi fans, you're going to love that. And we do got a lot of cool pre-orders to be talking about as well and with every predators you guys know what we got to talk about with that as well 11 new cancellations have joined the lineup as well and we also got a brand new 164 promo to be talking about as well especially for any guys out there who have been dying to see monster energy um, logos on the 164s you might be in for a good one and let's just say Lionel's at it again with another fail and it's going to be a pretty uh, laughable fail, if I do say so myself. But without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off this new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. And without further ado, I present you guys that wonderful, cheaply made slideshow.
Alrighty guys, welcome to the NASCAR Diecast News. This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and let's go ahead and get things started with your newly released Diecast from our good friends at Land Sales and Lionel Racing. So like usual, we're going to start off in numerical order and work down the list like we usually do here on the Diecast News. And the first one up, guys, we got to talk about the number two car, which is Brad Kozowski's number two auto trader, Ford Mustang. So this is one of the first, uh, uh, this is another one of the first Mustangs that we are looking at for this next new wave of diecast. And uh, might I say, guys, this auto trader scheme looks really nice. It's got a brand new paint scheme for this uh, for this year, guys. First time that we've seen the scheme on the 164, but the scheme might look very familiar for you guys, especially if uh, uh, more nobly he won this race. Uh, he won with this paint scheme at the Atlanta race, so really cool. Plus, I believe he also ran an alternate version of this scheme as well with the playoff emojis and the uh, green Monster Energy uh, logos and banners all around the car at the uh, playoff Las Vegas race. So really nice looking die cast and um, definitely is going to be a great addition to go along with the Auto Trader die cast if I do say so myself. Next up, we got some Ryan Newman die cast in this new wave of die cast. Uh, um, some of them are definitely I'm really looking forward to and some do look pretty much the same But might as well go and get the car that looks pretty similar to last year, which is the performance plus motor oil car But um, it is on the Ford Mustang body. So really nice looking car Even though it's very similar to uh, Trevor Baines and Matt Kenseth's scheme from last year But um, like I said, I mean probably worth recommend getting since it is on the Ford Mustang body but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I probably do prefer the yellow spoiler a little bit more, but they went with black this year. But, you know, overall, a nice, sleek-looking car, but I probably prefer the next car right here I'm about to show you, which is also going to be in Wave 5 of NASCAR Authentics. It is the Wyndham Rewards car for Ryan Newman in the Ford Mustang. A uh, very nice-looking uh, blue and white scheme color combination that I have going on for the Wyndham Rewards. Um, Definitely, I, I mean, definitely reminds me of a Mark Martin and uh, a Pfizer Viagra car, if I do say so myself. My God, that, that I mean, especially that font right there. It, it, my God, guys, I mean, <laughs> if they wanted to do a proper Dawn's throwback, guys, they could have done one on Mark Martin's Viagra car or something from like 2005. Would have been perfect. I mean, Winter Rewards would have been a great sponsor, but, you know, they went for the Oscar Mayer throwback and we saw what happened. They got canceled, so... <laughs> But in all seriousness, guys, I mean, I absolutely do love this car. It looks really nice. I, I mean, the paint scheme is very simple, but it does blend in well nice together. And hopefully you guys take my work for it and go out and get this car as all the others I'm about to show you. Next up is a very interesting one. This is the first, I believe this is the first Chevrolet Camaro that we got released for the Xfinity series. If you guys are, didn't know already, they did re redo the uh, look of the Chevrolet Camaros and the Chevrolet Silverados for both the for the uh, Xfinity cars and the trucks as well. So Chevrolet's got a nice new sleeker look, and uh, the mold actually is a little bit different. I did not notice this, guys. Uh, someone, uh, I believe, uh, someone on Instagram, I think, did like a side by side comparison of the Camaros and. Uh, if we get this car for NASCAR, thanks. I'm sure we probably will. Then I will do a side-by-side -side comparison. But um, but this paint scheme right here, guys, I'm really digging it, guys. You got the nice. Uh, it's a it's a very simple but complex paint scheme, but it works really well. I mean, I didn't like the, the whole design aspect that they had last year. This one really blends in nice. I like the fields and the agriculture. Just uh, uh, my God, guys. I mean, this car just literally looks like a portrait on wheels. Really, really nice looking paint scheme. I do say so myself. Much more better improved compared to what we got for last year's. But that is available in both scales if you guys are a Just Now Guy fan. Probably the only Just Now Guy car we're going to get since the rest of his cars got canceled. Next one up is another Chevrolet Camaro in the Xfinity series, and it is fan favorite Chase Elliott, guys, in the number eight Aftershocks. Um, Chevrolet Camaro for Junior Motorsports. So Chase Elliott's returning to Junior Motorsports, not in the number nine or the 88, but in the number eight. So really cool right there. Plus bringing back the eight in the Xfinity series, <laughs> not the Cup series, but uh, but that's pretty cool that Dale Jr. has got the eight car in the in Junior Motorsports. So you know, pretty fitting right there. And plus to have a fan favorite driver like Chase Elliott drive this car. I believe he drove this car at Daytona, if I'm not mistaken, because after shocks they sponsored a Chase Elliott and. Uh, I'm actually going to go out of order right here, guys, and show you guys the other Aftershocks car, which 
uh, is the Bubba Wallace number 43 Aftershocks Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. So I probably preferred this scheme a lot more than the Chase LA one just because, you know, it's got that petty blue. Looks really nice, and this this actually is the main sponsor for uh, Bubba Wallace. I mean, since we know Quick and Closed uh, decided to close down, and uh, well, not really close down, but uh, let's just say close their operations for NASCAR sponsorship, sadly. <laughs> My God, and we thought Nature's Bakery and DC Solar was bad. But for real, guys, this is a really nice looking die cast. And plus, this is one of the first few die casts that we actually got. So that has um, the NASCAR Heat Pro League uh, logo. So you can definitely tell this car was running Daytona due to that indication. I believe the Chase Elliott Hooters car also had that as well, if I'm not mistaken. But now back to numeric order, guys. I mean, this is a great car to get. The next car I'm about to show you guys is another number eight car. And this one I've been really looking forward to. Some people have some mixed feelings about this paint scheme. But I'm really glad to see this car back. And hopefully we'll get a throwback of this paint of this uh, sponsor um, pretty soon, guys. But it is Daniel Hemrick's number eight Caterpillar Chevrolet Camaro, Camaro ZL1. My God, I mean, this is a really nice looking card. Already getting some Bill Davis racing vibes just looking at this car, especially on that front. I mean, I know the yellow's not as bright and vibrant like we used to know, but um, glad to see, you know, these uh, the black and yellow return on the Caterpillar scheme. As much as I like the white that the white and the uh, black stripes that we have with Ryan Newman's cars, um, you know, really cool to have this classic design back. I mean, uh, it just I don't know it, any guys out there who are a big Jeff Burton fan are probably gonna like this paint team as well Or if you're a fan of Scott Wimmer and all the Bill Davis racing cars when they drove the Caterpillar car This is probably a cool car to get and plus if you're a Hemrick fan in general I recommend getting this car as well plus might I say I mean I'm not a big fan of special finishes But can we talk about the liquid color the color the, the, the liquid color on this car? Woo for the 124 my god, that is sexy. I mean, like I said, I don't really review on, uh, I don't really uh, showcase special uh, finishes on my on my diecast news show, but that right there is a really nice liquid color. So probably recommend getting that if you want to get the 120 version, but the 164 is just good enough. Who knows, maybe we'll get a liquid color variant in NASCAR Authentics. God, I hope I will, I hope they do, but really nice. Next up, uh, we got some really big favorites coming up in these next few. Uh, we got Chase Elliott's number nine, Mountain Dew Team Rubicon Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. This is, you know, the, uh, I believe this is the official Mountain Dew scheme that we got for this year. So, I mean, we, instead of a black stripe, we got a camouflage stripe for this year, which is very unique. I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really quite blend as well as the black, I mean, uh, but it's definitely different. Uh, plus, we got the Team Rubicon sponsorship as well on the sides, which is different as well. But that nice, bright, metallic green that you guys all know and love, and plus, it was also voted the top paint team for 2018, and not the PPG car. Yes, I'm still salty about that, by the way. Don't judge me or hate me, because <laughs> I'm a Blaney fan. But the Mount Dew scheme, man, I mean, of course, this is probably the only Chase Elliott car that we will know that will not have the screwed up metallic finish compared to the Napa car and the uh, and the uh, Hooters cars and the Kelly Bilbo car as well. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, Lionel definitely knows how to do a good job with the uh, Mountain Dew cars, that's for sure. And next one up, I definitely encourage you guys to get this car, guys. It is the Ryan Blaney Knopf Menards Ford Mustang. I was not a big fan of this paint scheme at first because you guys know I did love the highlighter highlighter car from last year because it matched the Indy car. But this scheme really grew on to me and it is so bright and vibrant. And you guys know me, I like the bright, vibrant schemes. This one right here, no exception right here. I mean, we got this nice baby blue and teal that's going around and then that nice bright highlighter yellow just looks really cool. This paint team is very unique, guys. Plus, we're also gonna get another variant of this, which is the lit mid green as well. So, I mean, uh, hoping we get some nice matching sets of these cars soon, guys, because I'm really digging this Ryan Blaney scheme as well. I mean, I still love the PPG scheme, don't get me wrong, but this right here is right up there as well. I mean, not, not as good as the PPG car, but it's definitely up there. Uh, for sure. Next up is, you know, a car that is very similar to last year's, but it got made um, somehow, and the Swiss T car didn't, so this is the only time you can get this driver. It is the Ty Dillon Geico Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. So, like I said before, um, actually, surprisingly, this car does not have Twist T logos on it because usually it's on a base, but um, since the Twist T car got canceled, um, maybe that's the reason why uh, they are not on this car. So, who knows? 
But um, yeah, I mean, there's some slight differences on this car, but it's practically the same car. Practically, I mean, there are probably, like, like I said, some few differences, and some guys could point out, like, oh, there's differences, you're wrong, OBB. <laughs> I mean, after all, I'm human, am I right? But um, yeah, I still like the main team, so I recommend getting it if you need a 2019 uh, Dylan car, especially for Ty Dylan, not Austin Dylan. <laughs> we already got a lot of Austin Dylan schemes. Next up, we got some great looking new fresh uh, Ricky Stiles Jr. Uh, paint teams for this year um, that are now available in diecast form. We got the fast, fast and all Ford Mustang. God, that sounded pretty cringy. That's like something Lionel will say be like. Uh, next up, we got the uh, fast, fast Lionel. <laughs> As I just screwed that up, but you guys know me. I mean, uh, Lionel Racing, gotta love them. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell I was talking about, but the, this fast and all scheme, man, um, very different, very, uh, there's a lot going on, but I kind of like it, guys. The blue, the black, the white, really nice looking paint scene that we got right here. Definitely would recommend it, but this next one definitely overshadows this, uh, the, the fast and all car, and it is the Sunny D car. Oh boy, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, Robbie Noonan's uh, Race Day 2011's review on this scheme because you guys know he likes that particular leather in this car, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but this is, uh, um, I mean, glad they changed up the Sunny D scheme. Uh, like I said, I mean, it, uh, it looks a lot more complicated, but it really flows well together, guys. I mean, uh, especially just, I mean, like I said, I love the bright colors. Um, this car is very vibrant, guys. I mean, uh, just really nice looking. Probably my favorite Roush scheme that we got for this year, guys. Really nice looking car. Um, heck, I might even get this car on the 187 scale as well because it's just a, a really fresh looking scheme. Next up, we got the Kyle Busch Interstate Batteries Toyota Camry, guys. And uh, I know this is the uh, the green zebra car, like I usually like to call it. But um, I probably would recommend getting this car because he did got his 200th career NASCAR win. And yes, that includes, you know, the um, all three national series at Auto Club. So, yeah, I mean, this car is pretty historic. I mean, well, the painting's pretty historic because he was able to accomplish that. Um, even though many people got mixed feelings about the situation, but like I said, this car probably, like I, I mean, it's basically the same scheme like we got from last year, but you know, um, I probably recommend getting it because of Kyle Busch creating that accomplishment, especially for his career. So, Kyle Busch fans are absolutely going to love this car. Next up, we got the Kyle Busch uh, Classic M&M's Toyota Camry. Pretty ironic that we got the Classic M&M's car released before the, um, I know that the, uh, the uh, M&M's uh, chocolate bar car is actually out on the track in the 164 scales so expect that in the dealers pretty soon probably by the time i upload this it'll already be released and this video will be outdated <laughs> story of my life but um some minor differences in this paint scheme i mean it looks like they changed uh the placement of the m ms i mean i mean pretty cool i mean uh you definitely cannot change the paint scheme of the m ms car i mean this scheme will never get old and uh if you have failed to pick up the m&m scheme the last couple of years and this is your chance to go and buy this 2019 variant of the kyle bush m&m's toyota camry next up we got another classic kyle bush car and he just won in this car um very recently throughout the, this year especially at ism and bristol um by the way he got another bristol win <laughs> and another ism win we gotta talk about Kyle Busch's uh, Skittles Toyota Camry, guys. I mean, like I said, it's it's another familiar scheme that the Kyle Busch fans are gonna love. I mean, some people are gonna want this scheme to change probably by the next year, but um, you know, you know those, those candy uh, schemes, man, you can't change them because you know the kids are gonna love them, and uh, heck, that's probably all that matters. Plus, if you guys were at the ISM and Bristol races, this is probably a good car to get to uh, celebrate that memory, depending if you like Kyle Busch or if you absolutely you know, freaking hate this driver. Either way, I mean, still a decent looking die cast. Next up, we gotta talk about uh, the guy who hopefully won't lose his ride at the end of this year. It is Eric Jones. We got three new die casts we talk about, and they are all related into the same company, guys. We got the Craftsman Toyota Camry, and this is actually the proper Craftsman car, guys, not the ugly, abysmal thing that we got from Wave 12, which, you know, I, you guys already know my thoughts and opinions. I mean, the red is actually perfect on this car. It is not dark red or that liquid color red that, my God, that was just awful, just awful. I mean, I mean, it wasn't bad looking, but just, you know, the mold was bad and just, uh, it was just dull, man. But um, thank God we got this car. Definitely a better replacement compared to the abysmal, freaking obnoxious car that we got from Way 12. Some people are going to like that car, but whatever. Um, 
definitely, definitely recommending this car. I mean, I'm probably going to get this car as well. I mean, but I'm, I might wait until it comes out in NASCAR Authentics. Hopefully, to God, why I know this is put in the PTC mold again. Because if they do, then, huh, you know, why I know this is trolling. So I can make another rant video. <laughs> uh, next up, we also got the classic DeWalt scheme, guys. I mean, uh, this is yet another car that's going to be released in Wave uh, 5. And, um, you know what, guys? This is probably good. I'm really surprised this car got made. I'm really surprised. I mean, I know it's a DeWalt scheme, and, uh, you know, I, it's, I mean, the same scheme that Kenseth's had, you know, in, in his 2017 year, and same scheme that we had with Eric Jones last year. So, I mean, uh, I mean, it's still a nice looking car. Don't get me wrong. But just, uh, you know, we, I think we've seen this car so many times now. I think, um, I don't know. I mean, unless you're the big Air Jokes fans, I would recommend getting this car. But if not, I recommend skipping it out because the next car I'm about to show you is a great replacement for the DeWalt car. And it is uh, the new sponsor that we got for Air Jones this year. It is Stanley. As you guys know, Stanley, this is now their third different JGR driver. They have moved over from Carl Edwards to. Uh, from Carl Edwards to uh, Daniel Suarez and now to Eric Jones. So really cool. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they decided to change the scheme up again. And I must say, you know, it's definitely different. Um, you know, I I don't know I still kind of liked Suarez's scheme from last year, which was really cool. And don't get me wrong, I still like the Carl Edwards Stanley car as well. So if you like the Stanley cars, I probably recommend getting this car as well, just because you know it adds great to that collection. And um, heck, I can't remember when he drove this uh, when he drove this car at, but um, you know it is a very, very nice looking car. But I'm sure you guys can help me out with that because you know <laughs> I got a lot of cars we talk about, but we only got a few more to talk about in the 164s, and we'll get down to business, shall we? Next up, we got the Wood Brothers car, guys. It is the Paul Menard Ford Motorcraft Quick Lane. And it is on the Ford Mustang body, guys. So a great car to get. I mean, it's got that classic Wood Brothers design scheme that we all know and love. Still got that nice, beautiful Golden 21 with the red rims. Plus, it's also, I mentioned, on the Ford Mustang body. So easily a must get, that's for certain. Um, the next, the last two I'm about to show you guys are also from the Ford Mustang uh, molds. And uh, this next one right here, I'm really surprised it got made. I thought it was actually canceled, but it got made somehow. This is the car that David Reagan drove at the Daytona 500, and um, it's, I, I mean, kind of kind kind of ironic that this car got released along with uh, the Chase Elliott aftershocks and the Bub Wallace aftershocks. So, got a nice time frame going on when all these diecasts were raced and when they were released. But this is his uh, number 38 selective blinds. Ford Mustang. Like I just mentioned, he drove this car at Daytona, and you know, it's a very um, distinct car. I mean, we've never had a scheme like this before for David Reagan. I'm glad to see some blue and white. Definitely brings me back the days when uh, he, um, in his early days of front row, and even with Roush as well, if you guys remember his AAA scheme. Um, I mean, I know no, it doesn't look exactly like that, but you know, I, I, I do see you know, that the colors definitely remind me of that. But, um, I don't know, that's just a random thought I had. But, you know, still really nice. Um, I believe this might be the only 38 card that we got released for this year. I mean, there could be more. I mean, who knows? Lionel's been canceling diecast like crazy. But um, I'm sure you guys can help me out in the comments on that. But uh, in the last card to be talking about, probably another favorite that a lot of people are going to like. Uh, even though this guy is kind of having another slump full year. I mean, who knows what's going to happen to this guy. But it is Daniel Suarez in the number 41 Haas Automation Ford Mustang. We got a, I mean, of course, Suarez. This is the first Suarez car that we got released. Uh, it's a shame that his Eros car got canceled, guys. I mean, very ironic. But so, but glad to see his Haas car uh, made it. And I like the new look that we got right here. I mean, um, digital camo. I mean, who knew we were going to see digital camo on a stored Haas Ford Mustang? And my God, it looks really nice. I'm really impressed with this quality of this car, guys. It looks really cool. We're probably going to see this car in NASCAR Authentics. I mean, it's a dead-ass giveaway, but uh, yeah, really, really nice looking paint scheme. I do like this one a lot. But that wraps up on the 164s, guys, and now let's get on to the only 124 exclusive to be talked about, and it is on your uh, recent winner at Kentucky. Well, not really recent anymore, but it's been a few weeks. Um, we got to talk about the Ganassi guy himself. No, it's not Kyle Larson, but it is Kurt Busch, the number one Monster Energy Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. And this is a uh, this is his uh, Monster Energy scheme, which has only been produced in the 124 scale because you guys know probably by now, as I've probably said many times before, but for any, for any new people out there who are just tuning into the Diecast News, first of all, you got a lot of catch up to do, so good luck. I have a whole playlist for you guys to catch up on the Diecast News. 
only 216 more to go <laughs> but for real guys the monster energy cars i mean we usually do not see them on the one on the 164s i mean uh just because you know the 164s are marketed to you know a younger audience and monster energy does really want to promote that on you know cars that are marketed to uh, so-called kids so you know 124s are considered adult collectibles well not the quality wise or the weight i mean they're basically plastic but <laughs> oh boy here i go but i mean i'm gonna stay positive guys i mean this paint scheme looks really nice and i'm glad we got this made um i'm also digging that gear wrench logo as well as you guys know me i am an auto mechanic so really cool to see that and plus if you notice this car is also on a uh, it's not on a clear base it is on one of those uh black plastic bases that we get for every arc and elite so um really nice right there i mean i mean i can't really say this but it looks really nice on the base guys usually we complain about you know how call sponsored die, die cast or uh monster energy die cast on bases but this right here, right here doesn't look too bad i'm really digging these bases guys even though they are a hunk of plastic but you know i've got one and i'm showing it off on my Trix uh championship win and you know it, it's a great display item so would recommend getting this car and all the others that i showed you guys that this is going to wrap up the die cast portion of the uh, nascar die cast news and we are now going to get on to the pre-orders Alrighty guys, and now we are on to the pre-order section guys, and we got ourselves, you know, a lot of cool looking pre-orders to be talking about, nine in particular, and as always, we are going to start off in numerical order and work our way down the list, and the first one up is a very exclusive uh, pre-order that we got that's only going to be available in three locations, and no, it's not Plan B Sales, Line of Race, or your local diecast dealers, but let me go and show you guys right here. It is Tyler Reddick's number 2019 number two Gimme Radio Megadeth Xfinity Chevrolet Camaro's uh, Chevrolet Camaro for the uh, for Richard Childress Racing. So I believe this car is already sold out on one of the websites, but there's only three ways you guys get this car. It is on the Gimme Radio's website, Richard Childress Racing's website, and Megadeth's website. I believe it's already sold out on the Megadeth website and maybe on Gimme Radio's. So there's gonna be limited supplies of these. It's probably already met MOQ, but for any big Megadeth fans out there, if any guys are, um, I mean, feel, I mean, feel free to shout, shout, shout out in the comments if, if we got any metal hand, metal fans in this uh, comment section. I mean, uh, I'm more of a rock guy, but you know, I don't mind my metal. But pretty appropriate to have, you know, uh, you know, some people might say this is a sellout that we got going on here, but uh, I really like seeing a band on the ski on the on the NASCAR guys, and pretty appropriate at Tyler Reddick. I mean, Tyler Reddick usually has, you know, a lot of uh, <laughs> radio sponsorship cars, and this one right here. I mean, hopefully it'll get made, guys. I mean, it, it, it is a really nice looking paint team, if I do say so myself. Especially for all the metal fans out there. But Megadeth fans, I'm sure you guys are already digging this car since it's already sold out on your guys' website. <laughs> but next up, we got to talk about Kevin Harvick, guys. He just recently won the New Hampshire race in an uh, exciting finish between Danny Hamlin. But don't worry, Hamlin got his redemption at Pocono. Which, by the way, guys, I'm already going to straighten this out. Uh, the Pocono race version will not be uh, available for pre-order, guys, for Danny Hamlin. So, any guys out there who are looking forward to that, um, I, it's not being offered. This has been confirmed by uh, Lionel and Diecast fans, and now also myself as well. So, yeah, uh, sorry to hear about that, guys. But uh, I, I'm assuming the reason why is because his Texas win got canceled, but his Daytona 500 win made it. I mean... Well, it's the Daytona 500 car. I mean, you can't cancel that. <laughs> it's, it's NASCAR's biggest race of the season. But, um, you know, Danny Hamlin diecast don't really sell too well, so I do understand that. I mean, like I said, you know, we've had majority of his cars canceled, especially on the FedEx line, besides his express scheme. But just had to point that out there, guys. But back to Kevin Harvick, guys. We got his number four Bush National uh, uh, Forest Foundation New Hampshire race to win. Um, beautiful looking paint scheme. Uh, man, I'm surprised this car actually has an asymmetrical paint scheme because you know with NASCAR's uh, main data rules that they have to have symmetrical paint schemes. This car doesn't guys so this could be a really unique paint scheme that we got going on and he was able to go get it in victory lane guys. It's hard to believe that Kevin Harvick finally got a win this season guys. I mean it seemed like Stuart Haas finally had that slump that um, not too many people were looking forward to. I mean especially for Boyer and Ambrola. What the hell happened to those guys? Suarez, I mean, you know, people are already criticizing him that he's not living up to the hype. But you know what, guys? Give him another year. I think he'll just get to do fine. But um, another Harvard car to be talking about, guys. We, uh, If you guys thought the Millennial car was cringy enough, 
get ready for the Gen X car, guys. This car just recently ran the Pocono race, and I mean, I know this is not my generation. This is probably your guys' parents' generation that I'm talking about, but yeah i mean <laughs> what's next we're gonna have you know a baby boomers uh, scheme or a freaking uh gen z scheme i mean that's what it looks like but these guys see right there i mean uh i'm sure you know all the adults are here that are you know over um, you know, who were born before 95 are gonna enjoy this uh paint scheme since you know that's your guys generation but i think it's pretty cool that kevin harvick and bush are doing this guys i mean the millennial thing was kind of a joke but this was out of surprise, guys, and to be honest with you guys, this is really, I mean, uh, should I say it, funky and fresh. <laughs> so, I mean, this car is built for Bruder, guys. Hopefully, it'll make it on the, uh, uh, hopefully, it won't make it on the cancellation of this because that'd be pretty disappointing, especially for all the Gen Xers out there. Put your comment below if you are a Gen Xer, but I'm sure many of you guys are Millennials like myself or a Gen Z. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we got to talk about Jace Elliott. This is a brand new scheme that just got released today. It is his, uh, This is the car that he's going to be driving at the Bristol Night Race, and it is the number nine Hooter Spirits car. And um, you guys are probably wondering what the hell is Spirits? Well, it turns out it is their uh, their version of the alcohol line, guys, uh, with various vodkas and cocktails and drinks. So this car will be mounted on a one uh, on a base, including the 164s. Um, so. Yeah, this is uh, really interesting. I mean, just when you thought Hooters could get any more controversial with having a hot, sexy girl on the car, now they got alcohol, guys. Man, I can only imagine what's next with Hooters. But, I mean, yeah, this paint scheme, very unique, very different. I mean, um, you know, it's very simple, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I mean, I'm digging this car a lot more than his original Hooters car, which, by the way, I prefer last year's. But um, I'm just worried that Lionel's could screw up the metallic finish on this car, guys. It's going to have that... And plus, since uh, since we know most of the metallic finishes, <coughs> especially if Chase Elliott has a white car, oh boy, it gets screwed like crazy. So I'm worried that Lionel's going to screw the special finish up, and maybe that's why it's getting canceled. But knowing the Chase Elliott fans are going to like this car no matter what. But really nice paint scheme. This is available for Bruder. Next up, we got to talk about another one of your Kentucky wins. I know I'm pretty late to the party, but uh, Lionel just released this very late. And it is uh, one of your surprising winners, guys. And we thought Brad Moffa was going to win that Kentucky race. But it turns out, guys, the DGR Crossley truck got it done. And no, it's not Natalie Decker. <laughs> oh, God. Don't get me started on that. You know what? It is Tyler. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this name right. Tyler Ingram's number 17 Academy Sports and Outdoor um, Toyota Tundra truck. And, um, yeah, guys. Very surprising uh, winner that we got right here. I mean... I mean, uh, and a lot of people are like, is it going to be made in 164? So far, from what I see, it's only going to be available on the 124 scale. With how things have been looking for the 164 trucks, guys, I mean, um, we're probably not going to get any more pre for the 164 trucks since it looks like uh, Lionel thinks that there's not much of a demand for them, apparently. But, you know, stay tuned to the cancellations because we got more to talk about those. Oh boy, it's going to be ugly, just like last time. Mm -mm -mm. Another 7T car to be talked about is that you know, <laughs> took oh, uh, that Lionel took their sweet time to get the licensing rights to because, God, I mean, this car has you know, was raced at Sonoma, for Christ's sake. But it is Ricky Stiles Jr.'s number 17 Fast and All Thanks DW car. Um, you know, as much as I say this is a really nice tribute to DW, the Denny Hamlin throwback that we got for this year that he's running at Darlington, a way better and more accurate version than we got with this car. This car is straight up, straight up, is straight up a fantasy car. I mean, the colors are wrong. I mean, I mean, God, they even butchered the orange as well, guys. So, but it's definitely unique. I might see it get canceled since we got the uh, the, the, the actual DW uh, Fox signing off car actually got canceled. So who knows, guys? I mean, this car could sh surprise us. It is technically a throwback car, but like I said, the Hamlin throwback is a lot more better in my opinion. But I would recommend pre-ordering this car if you guys saw it in person at Sonoma. Plus, you know, it's supporting DW, so you know, I guess that's cool. But just wish they put a lot more effort into this, especially trying to get you know an accurate version. If they did, then my God, this car would look really nice. But um, yeah, this this was a um, you know a fail in my opinion. <laughs> Next up, we got another throwback to be talking about, and it is not a fail. It is actually a Glen Wood throwback, and it is Paul Menard's number 21 Ford Motorcraft Dawn to throwback. My God, guys, this is a really nice throwback. Really nice. 
I mean, if you are a longtime fan of the uh, Wood of the Wood Brothers Racing Team, this one right here is immediately going to catch your eye, um, especially being a throwback to one of the Wood Brothers, Glenn Wood. Um, just freaking awesome. I mean, th this car right here is definitely a true classic throwback. Plus, plus you got that classic 21 and Glenn Wood signature on there. Really, really nice throwback. I'm hoping you guys pre to this car because this right here is one you guys do not want to miss for sure next up we got to talk about this guy again guys i swear this guy if he keeps racking up more wins and doesn't get caught cheating he's gonna be your truck champion guys i mean i will be you know dead ass shocked if he <laughs> doesn't get it done well with how this playoff system is i mean anything can happen i guess <laughs> god almighty but it is Ross Chastain, guys. The watermelon mashing man had done it again, and he mashed his way to victory at, po at, at Pocono. And my God, he definitely smashed the melon, that's for sure. We got his number 45 Baja Arcolite Pocono truck race win. I just completely probably just pushed that name, but I really care. Ross Chastain has a lot of random sponsors, so I can only blame myself on that part or the sponsors he has. But... Yeah, I mean, this paint team is very basic. I do not know if this will make it on the, uh, if this will even get made. I mean, considering, uh, and this is actually the first ever Ross Chastain truck, the race version truck, that is only going to be uh, produced in the 124 scale, guys. They are not offering a 164 scale, considering that the last two race wins that we've got for Ross Chastain in the truck series have been canceled. So, must say it's a smart move. Plus, they didn't think that this car was going to sell, but... I don't know guys, I'm really worried about this car, but this is a, this is definitely a uh, very unique car, guys. I, well, I keep saying car, man, truck, it's a truck, for Christ's sake, Brian. There's a car, and then there's a truck. It's not both. Get that through your forehead, you silly goose. <laughs> and the last car to be talked about on this period of list, as we're going to wrap up this period of list and get on to the cancellation. Ooh, fun. It is the Alex Bowman number 88 Nationwide Children's Hospital Chevrolet Camaro ZL1, which he also drove at the Kentucky race. So a lot of very recent schemes that have just been uh, um, that, that that have just been recently ran at. And this one right here, guys. I mean, I mean, it, it's the, the paint team layouts, like where the butterflies are. I mean, it's almost looks like last year's, but they just decided to just do with one basic color. It's like a very light, dull baby blue. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know about this. I mean, the Nationwide Children's Cars have been canceled the last few times, uh, especially last year's, uh, which did got made in Wave 1 of this year for 2019, by the way. Um, I saw somebody on eBay actually listing that car as a 2019 car. I'm like, huh, those eBay schmucks have no idea what the hell they're selling. I tell you what. <laughs> oh, man, those guys just need to get out. Scalpers. My God. Maybe that'll be another rant I'll have to say for another day. But yeah, the Alex Bowman Nationwide Children's Hospital car, guys, that is Bill Fruiter. And that is going to wrap up this Fruiter list. And now it's time to get on to the turning point of this episode. It's time to get your ugly and shitting pants ready to roll because we are about to start the cancellation list, guys. Whew, here we go. We got 11, I repeat, 11 diecasts are now officially in danger and are now officially canceled by Lionel. And um, man, it, I swear, every episode, man, it gets worse and worse. I, all I can say is that if you are a big fan of Dawn's throwbacks and patriotic throwbacks, uh, well, that's a patriotic throwbacks. I mean, patriotic cars and throwbacks. This is going to be an ugly episode for you. And we also got some truck cancellations as well. So, I mean, it's, we're starting to see a trend of what's going on here, guys. So, yeah, enough for me blabbering. Let's go and get down a list, guys. Like usual, starting in America order and let's work our way down this uh, shithole, shall we? First up, we got Kurt Busch, number one, Tom Surf, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. He recently drove this car at the Atlanta race. And unfortunately, just like all the other Kurt Busch cars that were offered on the 164 scale, they have all been canceled. We are not getting a single freaking Kurt Busch car release this year, guys, in the 164 scale. I mean, we got the Monster Energy car that just got released in 124 scale. But for 164 collectors, you are shit out of luck. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, or no way to sugarcoat that, or, you know make it PG or G rated as possible. I mean, you are literally screwed out of the asshole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, Kurt fans are absolutely screwed, man. I mean, I don't have anything else to say about that. Um, yeah, I mean, disappointing right there. 
Next up, we got Brad Kozowski's number two Miller Lite Patriotic card that he drove at the Coca-Cola 600 race at Charlotte. This has only been canceled in the 164 ARC scale. And most of these cars I'm about to show you, these next one I'm about to show you guys, actually these last nine are all 164 exclusives that have been canceled. So, yeah, like I said, 164 collectors are going to hate this episode. But don't get the dislikes on me, guys. Give the dislikes to Lionel and this wonderful pre-ordering system. But, yeah, this paint team, guys, it's been very similar to what we've known and loved the last few years. I'm kind of disappointed because I really like this paint team, guys. I mean, this paint team, I'm glad it didn't change. Some people are like, it's getting old. They need to change it. I still like this team, man. I like the American flag in me. Plus, Brakazowski, you know, he likes to celebrate with the American flag in victory lane and when he does his victory burnouts. So, pretty appropriate to have this paint scheme. Um, it will be made the 124 scale, but I'm disappointed that we're not getting the 164 scale. Plus, I highly doubted that NASCAR Authentics is going to release a Miller Lite car. Oh, okay, just watch, watch, watch. Lionel's going to release this car in NASCAR Authentics, but they are going to remove the Miller Lite logos, and it's going to be just white on the front and white on the quarter panels. I mean, I, I'm calling it, guys. I'm calling it. They are going to do this. <laughs> Mark my words. I mean, they did it with the Truex car. I'm sure they're going to do it with this if, if, if we want one season more exclusives. Oh, man. There's going to be a shit show if that happens, guys. But anyways, guys, yeah, this is um, pretty disappointing for the Kozowski fans. I know my good buddy Dylan is not going to be happy about this, but at least the 124 version and the Elite got made as well. But once these four collectors, you're SOL. Next up, another Patriotic card just got canceled, and it is uh, for another year in a row. It is Austin Dillon's number three, Dow Salutes Veterans. This one I'm really surprised because this car actually looked like a Dale Earnhardt throwback in my opinion. I mean, it wasn't exactly just like it, but, my God, guys, I mean, this car, I mean, you guys probably know what car I'm talking about. You know, remember that that, 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 that American flag Dale Earnhardt car that I talked about when this car was released, when this car was on the pre list? This car almost looks like it. I mean, it's not a dead representation of it, but it's really close. I definitely see the symbolism on it. But, unfortunately, the 164 collectors are SOL, guys, because it's been canceled. So, just, man, that's so unfortunate. Um, he usually drives the schemes at Michigan, but, you know, am I say I'm not surprised? I mean, I honestly am not because, you know, we've seen the veteran scheme getting canceled every year the last few years. But this one I really thought was going to make it, but I guess not. But like I said, the 124 collectors are going to be glad because, you know, they got the diecast made. While us 164 collectors are left out in the dust like usual. And it only gets worse. It only gets worse. Here we go. These next three I'm about to show you are all Don's throwbacks. And this is when the raid to, for Lionel Racing is about to start. Heck, instead of raiding Area 51, let's go and raid Lionel, guys. What the hell? Let's all book a tr trip to uh, North Carolina and let's just raid the Lionel Retail Store. <laughs> I'm going to need some backup after that. So maybe I'll get all the boys in the Diecast community to get me going. Like Race Day 2011 and Diecast Buffet. Because we've all had enough of their shit. But here we go, guys. We get Eric Amrol's number 10, Smithfield Dawn's Throwback. It's been canceled in the 164 scale. un freaking believable This was, I thought, was going to be a hot seller. Apparently not. I mean, this was, you know, brought back a lot of childhood memories about uh, this is, you know, representing, you know, Tony Stewart's first championship. <sighs> My God. I mean, guys, I, I love this paint team so much, guys. I mean, if you guys don't like the classic Tony Stewart Home Depot scheme, my God, th th this is just disappointing. Really freaking disappointing. It just, ah, my God, guys. I mean, I know we've had some throwbacks diecast that have been canceled the last few years, but this one just flat out freaking sucks, man. I was looking forward to get this car, but, you know, it's what it is. I mean, that's uh, that's what you get when you try to pre-order with this pre-ordering system. And the next one, oh boy, here we go. It's a Ryan Blaney car. It's a Don's throwback car. I honestly have no words to say. I am, I honestly have no words. I mean, yeah, I know the bias in, the bias in me is starting to kick in because, you know, if a Ryan Blaney or a Truex car gets canceled, I'm definitely going to be pissed off. But this one right here, I mean, what the hell. I mean, I know there's not much going on in the paint team, but it's just... So classic. I mean, it's basically the Yellow Submarine NASCAR. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. I really do not want to say that because that's an IndyCar term, but it's, I swear, this is the Yellow Submarine of NASCAR. 
and it's fucking canceled. What? <laughs> oh my god. But no, we're gonna make every Chase LA diecast known to man, even if it looks like dog shit. Oh my god, guys. This is frustrating right here. I really love the Pennzoil schemes. I really do not understand why this car got canceled. I mean, I, I know I'm sounding really biased and I'm really ticked off, but just come on, guys. What the hell? We've had a Ryan Blaney throwback released every year, and now this is the first year we are not going to have a Ryan Blaney throwback 164. But watch people be like, oh, don't worry, we're going to get an NASCAR Phoenix. Well, are we? Or are we not? I don't know, because I know likes to be unpredictable. They do. So right now my hopes are very skeptical right now. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get an NASCAR Phoenix, but I don't really know at this point, because there's just so many great cars that have got canceled this year. And it's just going to be a tough pill to swallow for all I know, guys. I mean, unless we get an exclusive wave that has all exclusive cars, I don't know, guys. But this right here really hurts. I mean, this is uh, this is for our boy Mikey, Michael Waltrip. This is a throwback about his number 30 Penzo car. And it's still getting, got the numbers. I mean, what the hell, man? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that, that this car has been officially canceled, sadly. Next up, another Donson throwback car. And it is uh, Clint Boyer's Rush Truck Center's Mobile One car. Probably the best championship battle that I have seen, guys, in 2011. That was freaking awesome. I mean, yeah. This car brought back so many memories. And I'm so surprised this car got canceled. Again, in the 164 scale. I mean, this paint scheme is pretty much an exact replica besides the Office Jeep logo not being there. I mean, they still have Mobile One as a sponsor, so I thought, okay, that's pretty cool. And, you know, lots of recent NASCAR fans probably watched the 2011 season and saw how close that championship battle was. I'm really surprised this car made it on the DMP list. I'm really surprised. I mean, wow. This is... Wow. I, I don't know anymore, guys. These cancellations are just continuing to surprise me every year. Like I have mentioned, guys, I mean... At the, end of this, at the end of this year, guys, I am probably going to rack up how many cancellations that we have got this year in the 164 scale. Because we are definitely at an all-time high, guys. We are not going to get any new die casts coming out for quite a while. We're probably going to have another big cap like we did the last few months. I mean, I know we're starting to get die casts in, but with how these cancellations have been going, it's not looking good how later this season's going to be. But who knows? Lionel might stretch it out, but who knows, guys, at this point. It's just so unfortunate. But, yeah, you know, is what it is. Next up, we got Rick Snouse Jr.'s Patriotic Fastenal car. This has been canceled again in the 160... In, uh, actually, not in the 164 scale. This has only been canceled in the 124 ARC version uh, only. Well, wow. I, I See what these 164 cancellations done to me? I completely butchered that up. Let's try that again. Ricky Snouse Jr.'s Fastenal Patriotic car has been canceled only in the 124 Elite. Okay. So, this is probably... The only card that hasn't got canceled in 164 scale in this wave diecast. So, my god. I mean, as much as I like the elite diecast guys, I mean, this is a little disappointing. But, you know, at least we get the ARC and the 164 produced. So, not really a big loss. But, like I said, you're going to lose a lot of decal, a lot, lots of uh, diecast quality. But then again, you pay 80 bucks for the diecast. So, are the elites really worth it? Well, then again, I said the same thing with the ARCs. And we got four more to be talked about. And if you're a Ross Chastain or Alex Bowman fan, oh boy, hold your breath. These ones are going to be absolutely freaking horrifying. Next up, we got Ross Chastain's number 45 Car Shielded Gateway win. It got canceled in 164 ARC scale. My God. When the Kansas truck got canceled, I was like, my God, that was a beautiful truck. I was looking forward to that confetti in the True North scheme, but it got canceled. And we're like, all right, let's try it again with the car shield car. Guess what? Canceled again. Now you can see why I told you guys why they didn't, they're didn't. not offering 164 scale in the Pocono race version. Now you can see why. My God. And it only gets worse, guys. Out of all the Ross Chastain trucks that I have seen so far, this one right here in particular is by far the most disappointing to see on the cancellation list. The Waterman Melon himself, the freaking Watermelon truck, got canceled. Ross Chastain's number 45, Florida Watermelon Association uh, for Nice Motorsports, canceled in the 164 scale as well. Unbelievable. Un-freaking-believable. 
But, you know, people are going to be like, you got to pre-order or it won't be made. You know what? To hell with this pre-ordering system. This is absolutely freaking ridiculous, man. I, Lionel really needs to lower the minimum order quantity. Like, the pre-ordering system just, it's outdated. It doesn't work anymore. People do not want to pay for a diecast and wait for it to get shipped. Plus, if you do it from Lionel, I heard you get charged another 2 or $3 of shipping or taxes or whatever. Which is ridiculous. It's like, all right, you know, if there's more of my money can suck out, you know, suck out my wallet, Lionel. I mean, God, I know Howard Hitchcock's already enjoying it, being on his vacations in fucking uh, Bermuda or whatever the hell he's in. God almighty, hope he gets lost there forever. But, my God, guys, this is disappointing, guys. Really disappointing. I mean, I, I, dude, I had to say any other words to this. I'm sure you guys are going to ape shit in the comments right now. Just unbelievable. Next up, we got that the last two I'm about to show you guys are Alex Bowman uh, cars. And my God, guys, here we go. These both are canceled in 164 ARC scale. Alex Bowman's Exalta Dawn's Throwback. It has officially been canceled. It is canceled. The Tim Richmond scheme. If you guys remember that scheme, still wasn't enough. But then again, we made, we got the Lumar window film car that wasn't even a freaking Dawn's throwback car to begin with. Somehow got made in the Gold Series and the freaking NASCAR Authentics plate. But this right here is a proper throwback and it gets canceled. Something's not adding up here, guys. Something's not adding up. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know anymore, guys. And the last die cast to review on this cancellation list, as I'm about to go probably punch a wall after this video, it is Alex Bowman's Valvoline Patriotic car. Honestly, I love the Valvoline schemes, but this paint scheme, I mean, I'm kind of glad I got canceled. I'm not a really big fan of this paint scheme, guys. I, this is probably the first Valvoline scheme that I'm actually disappointed in. I mean, I know I probably said it was unique before, but looking at it now, the blue numbers don't really work, and uh, this this red-white ribbon that we got going on, I know it's trying to represent American flight, but it's not working. I mean, they could have done something a little more better. Maybe something just like the classic Valvoline scheme, but it's just missing that uniqueness that Valvoline has with their schemes. But, feel free to post your comments, thoughts below on the cancellations, as now, guys, we are about to get on to hopefully some more positive news, and it's on a new promotional car, guys. And, uh... If any of you guys were at the New Hampshire race, uh, I'm sure you guys probably ran into a AAA tent or somewhere around that range uh, from what I heard. But apparently there is a new 164 that got released that you can only get if you sign up for a AAA credit card. Now, um, I mean, depending if you have no credit or good credit, I mean, might as well go and get it. But if your credit's in the hold, uh, like many people, including myself, who, you know, have college loans to pay, probably not worth getting. But... Here's the diecast right here. We got Joey Logano's 2018 AAA Insurance Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Championship car. Now, I mean, right off the bat, you guys know my opinions on the Monster Energy Championship logo on the roof. Fucking horrific. Don't like it at all. But, I will say though, this car has the Monster Energy windshield banners on this with that nice bright green windshield and spoiler my god that is really cool that we finally got that and plus it's also on a base as well so because you know like i said with the kurt bush car uh if you guys just joined in on this uh, stream very late uh, the monster energy logos cannot be produced on the 164s and since you know it was they mounted it on a base because you know this is supposed to be a collectible item and not a toy so yeah so very unique. I mean, I, I don't really much to say about this, but I do gotta give uh, credit to Milo's diecast on Instagram. He was the one that showed this off, and uh, I might have done some trolling on Instagram, showing everybody that oh my god, we finally are getting the the Monster Energy logos on my 64s. But this ain't the first time it's happened, guys. If you guys remember the Kevin Harvick Bush Bucks car from a few years ago, from like 2017 or 2018, that car had a Monster Energy logo on the side. So, you know, Lionel is inconsistent, but this right here, I think AAA had a had the sponsor, um, or maybe Team Penske, but I want to say the sponsor AAA probably had a say in it, because, like I said, you can only get this car, if you're lucky on eBay, probably get to sell a fortune off of it. I'm probably guessing like 50 or 60 bucks, which is horrifying for a 164. It better be made out of gold if it's that time, <laughs> or make it a liquid color chase piece. Oh, God, I'm giving Lionel ideas now. Oh, boy. <laughs> 
but yeah, you can only get this card, guys, if you sign up for a AAA insurance credit card, which, you know, you know, if you don't want to mess with your credit, I would probably avoid it. I mean, after all, it's, it's a Lionel diecast. It's probably going to have decal errors and paint chips, so probably not worth getting, but something I decided to show off right there. And now it's time to uh, bring back one of my favorite segments, guys. Um, you know, we've had a lot of, uh, it is the epic fails, guys, and... Um, Let's just say I've seen a lot of epic fails from Lionel lately. I mean, I know this year has been a complete laughing stock. You guys have already seen all my NASCAR Athletics reviews. You guys will know. Um, especially when it gets to the point I have to make it to a rant review. <laughs> oh, boy. Hoping uh, we're going to have some more of those soon since you guys love those so much. I mean, do appreciate it. Um, you guys are tolerating my constant bickering and the bickering and such. <laughs> Apparently, you guys like it, so I appreciate that. My God. Can't believe we live in a world in 2019 where OBB is now ranting about diecast. Huh, what an interesting time to be alive. But anyways, guys, time to show you guys the epic fail. And this is actually coming from um, a user on Instagram known as Let's Go Schwarz 41 um, I definitely, I believe he's one of our big fans of the diecast news. But he uh, posted this and he also tagged me on Twitter about this car. So he recently picked up the Ryan Blaney Knopf 164, which by the way really uh great choice right there i know you're the schwarz fan but you got some great taste uh for uh those ford mustang diecasts especially the ryan blaney car but apparently he ordered this car from the line racing website and i mean you would think all right yeah you know he's gonna get some decalers and all that but will i say that lionel somehow managed to screw the car up really bad like i might show you guys now look at this photo you are probably wondering hmm well, I wonder what's going on with this car. What's wrong with it? Some people would be like, oh, uh, he didn't got the Knopf car. He got the Lippman car. No, that is not the Lippman car, guys. That is clearly the Knopf scheme. Somehow this car turned fucking green. I shit you not. Lionel messed up the color on this somehow. Either that or this guy is playing like the filter game with me. If he did, then by the way, this is a great fail. <laughs> and I'm just roasting his balls off on this video. <laughs> but I mean, if this wasn't intentional, guys, then this right here is a dead sign that Lionel, I mean, at this point, guys, why is Lionel in business anymore? I mean, honestly, why are they, guys? I mean, oh yeah, they're the only ones that make NASCAR I guess. I cannot wait until the damn day we get some competition because I tell you what, Lionel is going to go down the fucking tubes after seeing this, guys. How can you manage to screw up this car this badly? I'll take my word back, guys. 2014 was not the worst year for NASCAR diecast. This year alone has been single-handedly the worst year for NASCAR diecast. If this picture doesn't tell you how bad this year has been for NASCAR diecast, I don't know what to tell you. Some of you guys are probably delusional and thinking, oh, it's been the best season. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, um, I was in that trap a few years ago from Lionel. But once you get old and start thinking wisely, then you will know that Lionel is a very sketchy, uh, a, a very, very sketchy business, guys. And, uh, heck, it's only a matter of time they're going to crack and go down the tubes. But, um, yeah, guys, just wow. I mean, I, I, I honestly have no... I, I could sit here and just complain about the color and how just... Even the yellow looks wrong on this. I mean, just my God, guys. Who knows? Maybe someone's trolling me. But either way, guys, you guys got some good entertainment out of this. And I appreciate you guys' support as I am now going to officially wrap up this almost hour-long episode of the NASCAR ICAST News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, guys, please give your thoughts and opinions down below. And comment, like if you guys haven't already. And subscribe for more. And click that bell icon. And make sure you click onto the all sections on the bell icon because YouTube wants to make things a lot more complicated now apparently when it comes to notifications so do that real quick and until next time guys this has been obb the diecast news guy and by the way guys if you are going to be at the Watkins Glen cup race let's just say mr obb will be there so if you see somebody that looks familiar in the youtube videos then um that will be me guys so uh any guys feel free to comment below if you guys are going to Watkins Glen and we'll maybe do like a meetup somewhere um you know always looking forward to you know uh, see see uh see every one of you guys i mean uh you, you guys are freaking awesome and thank you guys for your support of this channel and until next time guys this has been obb the diecast news guy and i will catch you guys at Watkins Glen and on a new episode of the nascar diecast news